at the centre of EASD is its president, and I'm delighted that we're joined now by uh, Julian Zierath, president of the EASD. First of all, are you enjoying the, this Congress? Oh, this Congress is fantastic. The energy is overwhelming. Um, it's particularly fun to walk through the poster sessions and see the early career scientists presenting the work hot off the lab benches. And the e-learning programs that we've been introducing, those sessions are also really dynamic. So it's been a great, great experience. What have been the standout sessions for you? Well, I always like the prize lectures because they introduce you to an area of compelling science. The lecturers are really luminaries, so they're able to give a really authoritative overview of an emerging area. For example, we're going to hear this afternoon about the gut microbiome, and we've heard about immunometabolism. And they do this in a way that's really accessible to both the clinician and the bench scientists. So those are my highlights. And, of course, you can see all of those presentations on EASD.org. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, the young people that are here, the early career researchers, and I guess they're just starting out in their research and their clinical careers. Why should they become a member of EASD? I think membership in a professional society is really important for three reasons. So one is that you can develop a network. And you can develop a network of colleagues across a wide range of disciplines and career span. The second is that you can get access to career advice. We have here at EASD a young academy. So if you're a member of EASD, you can participate in different events that are tailored for early and mid-career investigators. You know, and the third one, I think, is just fun. You develop a sense of being a part of the family. And I think that that is always a good feeling, to have a place where you feel that you can get honest critique and you can get evaluation of your work as you present, either in the journal, Diabetologia, or at the meeting, as we have here. What I'm fascinated by is every corner that you go into in this uh, maze of a building here in Berlin is filled with people kind of in huddles collaborating. So this is the great, not just the networking place, but the collaboration hive where I guess a lot of the collaboration that leads to the trials and the research of the future take place. So it, it's a really important place for that. Well, you know, Absolutely. A lot of the problems we're trying to resolve in the laboratory or in the clinic are very complex. And we need to have complementary expertise. And for that, one person alone can hardly do it. So if we can find the best experts to help us solve a piece of the puzzle, perfect. And that's why collaborations are great, and that's why a meeting like this I think is really useful, because it puts you into contact with people that can help you solve these complex problems. Now I can't let you go without asking you to get out your crystal ball. <laughs> Where are the hot areas in diabetes? Where do you think that research is developing, say in the next five to ten years? Well, for me personally, um, it's going to sound silly, but I think it's more personalized medicine. So my personal feeling is personalized medicine. And I think it's because we're recognizing that not one size fits all. And we're going to need different solutions to help a variety of different phenotypes and different aspects of diabetes or related disorders. So I'm really looking forward to how research evolves with genetics and physiology to understand the diverse response to different treatments and how that then can be tailorized on a more personal level to improve human health. So that's what I'm excited about. Anything else that you see coming up? I, you've already mentioned the microbiome which, uh, and the personalized medicine. They seem to be the two big trends of the, uh, of the moment. But immunometabolism also sounds interesting. Well, that's fascinating because what it does is it bridges together some fields of immunology and metabolism and cardiovascular uh, physiology and metabolism. But I'm going to say that my other favorite area is 
epigenetics. Oh yes, we've just yeah. uh, uh, we've just been interviewing uh, people about uh, epigenetics. It's an absolutely fascinating area, yeah. and there are already drugs that you can use to take off those epigenetic marks. That's right. So in other words, disease. your DNA is not your destiny, and that you can, through modifying your environmental exposures, influence your metabolism and how that might impact generations further on. So I think that field is fascinating and complex and that will reveal quite a bit for us as we move forward. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for sparing the time to come in and see us because I, I know that being president is just kind of flat out meetings and, and running around. And I, I suspect you've probably lost about three or four pounds already just going up and down the stairs. Well, here. I've gotten a lot of steps, so that's great. So this is a wonderful meeting for keeping my activity levels high. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Now, remember, you can see all the presentations that we've mentioned and find out about the Young Academy and the membership uh, programs on EASD.org.